Okay, so welcome to our ZMY Align class. If you have a strap, grab your strap, and then we're going to actually start sitting up today. So when you are ready, just take a seat on your mat. If you need something to help the lower back not feel so compressed, you can put a pillow or a blanket underneath the sitting bones, or you can even just roll up the back of your mat for a few moments and, and have that underneath. Jody, the sun is just gonna be pouring on you today. <laughs> I'll be watching you squinting at the camera. <laughs> Sun is a good thing though. And actually, obviously today is a holiday. So um, there's a few things. I mean, not everybody celebrates Easter, but if you don't celebrate Easter, you're celebrating Holy or, um, you know, Passover maybe, or the spring equinox or something like that. Everything around this time of year is on the focus of rebirth, you know, things coming back to life. Um, this promise of renewal and starting over. And so I like that this time of year, I mean, it's in our bones. It's what we naturally feel. We, you know, with the seasons, we're feeling all of these things coming back to life and um, just this energy of being alive. So um, I want to kind of focus on that. Have your palms just facing down on your lap and sit up nice and tall. We'll take a few breaths. If you can, try to untuck the tailbone and tilt the pelvis forward a little bit. Bring your chin a little bit, you know, down towards the chest. And this just kind of gives us a little bit more height, a nice long spine. If you're comfortable closing the eyes, close the eyes. We don't have to wait until spring to find or feel or take this action of renewal. It's something we can do every single day when we wake up in the morning, even in each class when we lie down for our Shavasana at the end. It's a renewal of who we are and what we feel and think when we sit back up. So we always have these opportunities of starting over. Just feel the breath coming in and out of the nostrils, beginning to move slowly through the body. Soften the shoulders. We're just gonna take a few more moments in this stillness. And then let's go ahead and blink the eyes open. Take a deep breath in and then exhale through the mouth. <sighs> New breath. Inhale, bring the arms up. Grab the left wrist, and then you're gonna lean to the right. Back to center, grab the right wrist, lean to the left. And we're going all the way down. So right hand is gonna come to the ground, and then we're gonna lean to the right. Left hand comes down, lean to the left. Go ahead and bring that hand down, inhale the arms up and release your fingers, exhale hands in front of the heart. Two more times, inhale, just gather up all this good stuff, bring it in. One more time, inhale, reach up, open up the lungs and then exhale down. We're gonna take the knees and drop them to the right. So grab your strap for this, you might need it. 
you can stay straddled here. I'm pretty sure both of you have the ability to bring the foot into half lotus or just bring it onto the opposite thigh. This back foot, I don't know if you can see how my foot is bent right now, don't want that. We wanna actually bring that heel close to this, the butt. So you're gonna take your right fingers and reach for these toes, right fingers, right toes. If your fingers do not reach your toes, use your strap, put it around the foot and grab that strap, okay? The left hand is gonna reach for the right knee. So knees are going in this direction, we're twisting in this direction, but take a deep breath and get tall first. And then exhale, revolve to the right. As you're pulling the strap, let it help revolve you. Your left hip can lift up and start pushing if that's what it wants to do. Otherwise, we're just gonna take a few breaths here. And then on your next exhale, return back to center, release and flip over to the other side. So knees to the left, make sure the top of the foot is on the mat, heel is towards the body. And then you take that left foot and put it into the right hip crease, best you can. Begin to reach for the toes. And if you're not able to reach the toes, use the strap and grab onto the strap. See if this side is different than the other. I mean, part of this alignment thing that we do is noticing which side is kind of not off. It's not really a positive word, but different. Um, you know, could you grab your toe on the other side, but this side, no. Or maybe you can grab onto the strap a little bit more on this side, just for observation of the body. Inhale, get tall. Exhale, revolve. The right hand is gonna be pressing onto that left knee to help you. Never really concerned about what direction your neck is going for, for twists. You wanna keep it over the heart, keep it over the heart. If you feel like the neck is okay to look over the left shoulder, that's fine too. One more breath here. And as you exhale, come back to center. Unravel yourself, lie down. And so lying down on your back, you're gonna bring the knees up to the body one at a time. And then you're hugging both knees, lifting the tailbone up towards the ceiling and then rocking left to right. We're going to do a twist here also and then use the strap again for our Supta Hasta Padangustasana. So keep the knees up towards the body as much as you can. Engage the abdominals here to help you and then drop the knees to the right. So coming into a pretty deep twist here. You've already warmed up a little bit. Extend the arms straight out or bend at the elbows. And again, you can look up towards the ceiling or you can look off to the left. You decide what feels better. We're trying to have the hips stacked as much as possible, but you know, if you, if your legs are having a hard time stacking and they're lifting up, if you want to use that right hand to help, that will be fine. Release the tongue, soften the jaw and allow the belly to be soft here. The left shoulder is going in the direction to the mat. If it's really high off the floor, you're gonna to wanna to either bring your arm down or if you have a blanket nearby, support under that left shoulder with the blanket or a block. Taking one more breath here. And then exhale, abdominals engage. Lift the legs off the floor to bring the knees back to center. You can even do a rock back and forth here, but we're keeping the knees up and then we're just gonna drop them off to the left now. Do the same twist on the other side. Try to get the hips stacked. 
keep that right shoulder towards the floor or supported with a block or a blanket. And then left hand can help the legs if they need help. In these twists, whether we are, you know, wringing out the organs or whatever you want to visualize, we are getting rid of old. I mean, this doesn't detox your body. Your body detoxes on its own each morning or whatever the cycle is um, when you wake up. But when you're twisting, you are moving those organs around and they really like it and it does keep things moving and moving along naturally. So twists are really important, not just for stretching the hips and the lower back and the shoulder. On your next exhale, you're gonna engage the abdominals again and then slowly bring those knees back up. You can rock them left to right one more time and then we'll bring the feet to the floor. Jody, I'm trying to think if you've been in an Align class or if it's been a while. These are really like the classes I used to teach on a regular basis so much, you know, because I just love props so much. Okay, so get your strap, straighten the left leg, and then we're gonna put the strap around the right foot. So strap is around the right foot, and then you're gonna hold the strap with just the right hand and extend the leg so the heel is pushing up towards the ceiling. You wanna grab up onto that strap as high as you can. So if you're used to grabbing the toe with a straight leg, your hand should be pretty high up there. I don't want your knee to bend here. I want you to focus on pressing through the heel and keeping the leg straight. So wherever you need to grab on the strap to make that happen, pressing through the ball mount of the big toe up towards the ceiling, and then your left hand is gonna rest on the left thigh and that leg will be active as well. Toes up towards the ceiling. Once you have the strap and the legs straight, soften the shoulder towards the floor, the right shoulder, soften it down. And we're gonna breathe here. Two more breaths. Okay, so now I want you to rotate the toes off to the right. So it's gonna be like when we extend our leg out to the right, your toes are gonna to be constantly trying to point towards the floor, okay? So we're not just actually going out to the right, we're trying to rotate the hip and open up that way. So go ahead and take the right leg out to the right. Let your strap help you, but don't depend on it 100%. Use your muscles. Left thigh is gonna be um, pressing towards the floor. And so it's like you're actively lifting the heel up towards the ceiling and the toes down towards the floor. Take one more breath here. Use the inner thigh of the right leg to bring the leg back to center slowly. So those are your adductors. Switch hands, left hand is gonna grab the strap and then your right hand will go out to the side, palm down. We're gonna cross over the center line, but don't let the right hip lift at all. Like if it starts to lift, you're going too far. We probably are just gonna go maybe six inches or so, depends on how tight you are in the outer leg. You'll feel it when it's time to stop. Both feet are still flexed. Come back to center. We're gonna take a, a strap in each hand. Deep breath in. Lift from the chest up, chin to shin, pull the straps back. One, two, three, four, keep lifting, and five. Lower the head, release the strap, bring the leg down. 
Good work. Okay. Right leg will stay straight. Take the strap around the left. And then hold the strap in the left hand. Same thing here. We'll go through the side a little bit faster now that you kind of know what to expect. Heel will be up towards the ceiling. I want a straight leg here. So don't cut yourself short either. Like see where you can go. This foot will be active. And if your knee is bending a little bit, just be honest with your body and back out just a little bit. The right hand will be on the right thigh. Soften that left shoulder towards the mat and we'll breathe. Be sure you're not lifting your leg with your face. Soften the muscles in the face. Two more breaths. We're gonna go out to the side. So keep the heel lifted up towards the ceiling, toes rotating down towards the floor, and then bring the leg out to the left. Go as far as you can without this right hip lifting too much. It's gonna lift a little bit. And then use the adductors or the inner thigh muscles to bring it back to center. Okay, both feet are still flexed here. Switch hands, left arm extends, and you're gonna bring this left foot over the center line until you feel that. Um, it's the tensor fascia latte muscle going into the IT band. You're gonna feel those start to stretch. And then let's go ahead back to center, grab a strap with each hand. When you're lifting, it's very, it's imperative that, yes, we want to get the chin up there, but we want to lift front, like let the shoulder blades lift you up and be engaged in the abdominals. Okay. Because as you're up here, your shoulders are actually sinking back. So we're not curling up like this. We're actually lifting with the chest. Okay. So deep breath in. Exhale, lift chin to shin, shoulders back. Everything is super engaged. One, two, three, four, and five. Soften down. Remove the strap, float the leg down. Whew, I think that's the first time I've done that without a strap and actually kept my legs where they would be with the strap. That's, some, that's saying a lot about yoga, I will say that. Okay, bring the bottoms of your feet together. Let the knees hang out to the sides for a moment. And so I want you to take your hands like the letter C. So like Pac-Man hands kind of, but turn them into the letter C. And you're gonna take your hands, thumbs will be up, but you're gonna line up your C's with your hip creases so that you can just push your legs down away from you. And this will bring your lower back into just like a little bit of traction. It feels pretty good. If, it's, if you're not feeling anything, you don't have to do it, but just try it. Just basically push your legs away from you. And then bring the arms overhead and take a stretch. And then bring the arms down, bring your knees back together, roll onto your right side and come onto your belly. Okay, so using your right arm as a pillow, you're gonna grab the left, try for the ankle. If you can't grab the ankle, go ahead and grab the foot, but try the ankle first. And if you're resting your forehead on your forearm, then your neck will be neutral. The shoulders aren't dropping forward. The shoulders are pulling back and just keep pulling the heel towards the body. Push the hips into the floor. 
If your heel is touching your bum, then grab your foot and or your toes and start to push the heel, sliding it off the side of the body. Just be sure the heel is always touching the body. And I'm pretty sure you too feel something here, but if for some reason you don't, or if somebody's watching this that doesn't, you can also come up onto your arm. You will definitely feel something here. We're gonna take a few more breaths, keep the shoulders back. And go ahead and release. Switch arms, grab the right foot or ankle if you can. Bring the heel towards the body. And once the heel is touching the bum, if it does get there, start to press the foot down. Take your breaths here, shoulders back. Go ahead and release. Bring your hands to your lower ribs. We're gonna come up to hands and knees. And we're not gonna come into child's pose. We're gonna come into as if we're, we're getting into child's pose here. So the big toes will come together, the knees will come apart. And I want you to come down onto your forearms first, palms to the floor. And start to sink the lower back. So you're sinking the lower back. You can sink into the shoulders here because if, if you're able to sink, you know, where the shoulders come up towards the ears, then start walking your hands forward. Eventually, maybe your chin or your forehead comes to the mat and you're just sinking the upper body towards the mat. This is a puppy pose. At the same time, your, your sitting bones are lifting up towards the ceiling. And you do want the hands to be active here to help you elongate the spine. We're gonna take a few more breaths here. I want you to bring your awareness to the lower back or even just any muscles around the spine that you're feeling the most stretch and see if you can release on a deeper level. Consciously, Soften the muscles even more than what they are right now. And go ahead and lift the head, start to walk the hands towards the body. You're just gonna sit back on the heels now and come into child's pose. But if you want to grab towards the bottom of your feet and come into a ball, instead of keeping the arms extended, you can do that. Whatever comes to mind here, as far as something that you need to release, it could be a thing, it could be a person, it could be a feeling in order to you know, be new or renew. Sometimes we need to let go of old. So if there's something you need to surrender here or let go of, this is the time. We're gonna take one more breath here. Return the hands back to the mat. And then come to hands and knees. Bring your knees under your hips, coming into downward facing dog here. So curl the toes under, lift the hips up and back. You can puddle the feet, push the floor away from you. Be sure your hands are lined up safely. Wrist creases up parallel to the front of the mat and you're pressing the roots of the fingers. 
once you are done stretching the back of the legs and you come into lengthening the spine, I want you to engage the belly and take one step in and press your heels towards the mat. So this might round the spine a little bit. This is why we're gonna engage the abdominals. But I want you to just really focus on pressing the heels towards the mat and lifting the sitting bones at the same time. If your knees still bend, that's fine. And just explore a down dog here. Maybe shift the hips left to right and come up onto the toes. The down dog is never static. It just never is. You're always playing with it. You're always moving around. We'll take one more breath here, exploring that and then separate the feet to the edges of the mat. So we're gonna do a couple of things here. We're gonna walk the hands just a little bit closer, still staying in kind of a down dog position. And I want you to take your right hand and grab the outside of the left leg. And you're gonna pull, so coming into this twist where you're looking under your left armpit. You might feel this in the shoulder, you might just feel more strengthening here. Instead of stretching, go ahead and bring the right hand back. Make sure you plant it in a safe spot. Left hand is gonna grab the outside of the left leg. Pull the left, um, the, like the elbow on the left arm will bend. Look under your right armpit. Still pressing the heels towards the mat. And then go ahead and return your hand. Walk the hands all the way towards the body. Keep the feet separated. And so if you have to bend the, the knees a little bit here, that's fine, okay? But keep the legs strong and keep the sitting bones lifted because I want you to completely let go of the upper half of the body. Grab opposite elbows and that weight will help you hang forward a little bit more. We're still keeping the shoulders back and you can add some movement, sway back and forth. Notice where it's okay to let go here and where you still have to, to work. Make sure the head is dangling. We're gonna just bring the hands right to the waist. So stop the, the swaying, bring your hands to your waist, press the feet, bend the knees if you need to, inhale, come all the way up. Just making sure nobody passes out. Okay, we're good. <laughs> come to the front of your mat, shake the legs out a little bit. Find your Tadasana. Tadasana will not be our major focus today, but it's always important to find that alignment in your mountain pose. We'll do some movement here by Surya Namaskar A, doing Surya Namaskar A. And actually our word for the month is Surya, Surya, the sun. It means the natural sun and light and also the light that is within us. Okay, inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold. Your legs are really warmed up here so you can keep the legs as straight as you, you just try, but bend them if you need to. Inhale, look up. And then exhale, step back, chaturanga. Go all the way down. Inhale to a cobra. So the hips stay pressing and then back to downward facing dog for five breaths. One, add the exploration that you just did. If you wanna step the feet in and press the heels, you can. Two, just be sure you're breathing deeply. Three, four, and 
and five. Inhale, look up, step forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up. And exhale back to Tadasana. One more time. I'm gonna come watch you guys. Inhale your arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, look up, get a flat back. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale up, this time we're doing upward dog. So get your hips off the floor, get your legs off the floor, everything is lifted. And then curl the toes under, take it back to downward facing dog. One. Good. Your guys' backs are really nice and long. So Jesse, if, you're hit, if your heels are not on the floor, you can afford to take a step in. Press your heels. Good. Three. And then just keep the belly engaged. Four. And five. Inhale, look up, step forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up and exhale, hands in front of the heart. Okay, so uh, grab your strap. You're gonna put the strap around your arms, okay? Um, I don't know why I don't have a strap here and I have nothing that I can show you, but just... <laughs> This is so ridiculous right now, but I just wanna show you the spot where the strap is gonna to go. It'll go like right above that elbow crease. And so you're gonna put the strap together and, and um, have it so it's shoulder width apart because we're gonna end up doing Ordva Hastasana, but I want your arms to be staying in the same, on the same plane. So tighten it enough so that you can press your arms into the strap but they're gonna be at least shoulder width apart. Otherwise you'll get stuck once you get to your head, okay? Okay, so palms will be facing up and then with your Tadasana leg, see like it's kind of nice to have that camera there because I can see that I'm totally shifting my hips forward sink the hips back, be sure that your weight is even, balls of the feet, heels of the feet, and then lift the chest. This will automatically help the spine. And then, so the shoulders should already be pretty much grounded into the, or I should say that the humeri should be already grounded into the shoulder sockets. Engage the muscles between the shoulder blades. You guys have done this before. You've been here before. We're just doing it in a, a little bit different awareness way. So press your arms into the strap and don't let the shoulders lift up. Just come into your upward facing arms, keep press or keep um, bringing the hands up towards the ceiling and keep pressing the shoulders down. Keep pressing the arms into the strap. And the arms, stay completely straight. So if they start to bend at the elbows, straighten the arms again. Soften the shoulders away from the ears. Good. And keep the muscles, the serratus muscles under the armpits working, the shoulder blades working. This is not easy, right? Take some breaths here. As your arms went up, your hips might've gone forward. So be sure you sink them back again and get everything in alignment. So your forearms, maybe they're at the ears. If your shoulders are tight, they might not be. Good, yep, engage the abdominals. Jesse, send your hip sockets back a little bit. Your weight is still, yeah. Now lift the chest, keep the legs. Yep, good, you guys look good. Take another breath here. And now we're gonna sink back into chair. So shift your weight to the back of the body. Drop the sitting bones, keep the arms where they are. And so it's important here to really drop the tailbone. It's not a total tucking, but you're really dropping the tailbone and engaging the abdominals. We're gonna take three breaths here. 
looks good. Keep reaching through the fingertips and lengthening through the tailbone. Go ahead and come back to standing and then bring the arms down and release the strap. Yowza. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh. We're gonna do it without the strap now. Muscle memory. Okay. Ready? We're gonna do it a little bit faster. Pretend you still have that strap. Inhale, bring the arms up as you keep the shoulders down. Adjust your alignment. So be sure your weight is evenly distributed. Nice, long, straight line, right? Now exhale, sink the hips back. Keep reaching through the fingertips and drop the tailbone. Really lift the navel up towards the ribs. Knees are together for support here. One more breath. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. We're just folding again, so exhale, fold. Inhale, arms all the way up. Exhale, go all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up, palms together. Exhale, hands in front of the heart. All right, release the arms. Find your feet, <laughs> separate the feet. Grab your strap once again. And so you're sideways on your mat because you don't want to slip. Make sure that your feet are like way beyond the hips, okay? They should be at least at your forearms. You're going to grab the strap behind you and then you're going to hold the strap with your um, palms facing out, facing forward. I want you to have the straps maybe, let's all go to just right outside of the legs. Cause if you hold it too far out, you're gonna kind of miss out on maybe some stretching you could get on your shoulders. So be holding the strap right outside of the hips. You can adjust this as we fold forward. Inhale, lift, strong legs here. Exhale, fold. And as you fold forward, the knuckles go up towards the ceiling. So try to get the arms to hang forward. If they're not hanging forward, separate the hands on the strap just a little bit. If you go too far, they'll end up going too far. And then keeping the legs strong, let the head dangle and really feel the shoulders open here. Yeah, this is a let go thing. Bring your awareness to your shoulder sockets and let go. Let the arms go. And Jesse, you can actually go a little, go ahead and separate your hands a little further away from them, from each other and let the arms hang forward a little bit more. Yes. Take another breath here. And you're gonna inhale and come all the way up. Good, and release. So I had, uh, you know, I was doing the fingers behind the back. And then, so I was getting an adjustment in that. And my teacher said, let go and let God. <laughs> and I said, I'm, I'm trying to help my arms go further. And he's like, just let go. So then they went like, so, like, I don't know, two feet further. It was so crazy. You know, in my mind, I was helping. And isn't that the case? Like, we think that we're helping when we're trying to sometimes control a situation. And that's not, not what it is at all. We just need to let go and let it do its thing. Pretty cool. Go ahead and bring your feet together. We're gonna do dancer pose and then go back down on the mat. All right, don't need the strap for this one, but you might want a wall or something or a couch or anything like that is fine. We're gonna grab the right 
ankle. We've already started warming up the quadriceps for this. So left hand will be on the waist or the wall. Just have the knee pointing down for a moment, okay? You can flex the foot, knee pointing straight down. If your shoulders feel open enough at this point to grab the inside of the leg, do that. And remember, it's okay right here. Okay. So we're going to start pushing the foot into the hand and tipping forward at the same time. Keep a micro bend in the standing knee, don't lock it out. And then you can add the left arm. Have a focus point, use your breath and just keep pushing and opening. And just do what you can here. You can take it as far as you want. Push your foot into your hand a little bit more to start bowing. This should be a back bend. So your chest is pressing forward towards the mat. Good. And then when you're done, very slowly sit back up. Once you're sitting back up, you can let the foot go. Nice and controlled, good. And do the other side. Grab the left foot, knee pointing down first. And your hand can be on your hip or touching the wall or the couch for balance. If you can grab the inside of the foot, grab the inside. Otherwise, start pushing the foot into the hand, like really pressing the foot into the hand. And then reach the right arm forward to, to kind of counterbalance you. And just go as far as this pose, like just feel good in it. As long as you're keeping that micro bend in the knee, don't lock the knee out. Use your back muscles to help you. Use your abdominals to help you. See what lifting the pelvic floor feels like here. How does that change your pose? And then when you're done, yep, just tip back up and let go. Nice. Shake the legs out a little bit. We're gonna separate our feet, bring the toes out. Inhale, bring the arms up. And then exhale, bring the elbows down, come into a squat. So this, of course, like doing the squat just reminded me of like kids yoga, like this would be like an Easter bunny pose, right? Jesse, um, I'm gonna be doing some kids yoga classes in the summer. So keep that in mind for your girls. Elbows are gonna press the knees open, palms together. If your heels are not lifted yet, go ahead and lift them. And then two options, you both work with binds. So, I mean, just go ahead and try the bind first. Bringing the left arm behind the left knee and then reaching behind. You can do that or you can just do and open up here. Good. Try to take a breath or two. And then release. Nice. And then other side. Work on getting the knee close to the armpit and only wrap around the top of the leg by the knee. And then look up towards the ceiling. And then go ahead and release. Okay, so to give your ankles a break, roll up the back of your mat and put them underneath your heels because we're gonna go big, all right? Mat is gonna go underneath the heels for some support because you've already been working the ankles. Bring the knees together, feet together, and we're gonna try to go over both legs, Pashasana. So twist to the right and start to bring the knee into the left armpit. Just go where you can and then reach behind you. Yep, knees together, feet together. And then bring the right, yes, right arm to the outside of the leg or the left arm to the outside of the leg, as long as you're twisting opposite. 
And you're going around both legs here. Yep. <laughs> just try both sides for fun. And then when you're done, just let go. Have a seat when you're done. Intense, right? Just when you think you've got something, then it just gets a little harder. Tap the feet a little bit on the mat and then lie down. Give your ankles a break here. When you hug your knees, actually, you're not gonna act to hug the knees. You're gonna cross at the ankles and you're gonna pull the feet towards the body. So you're gonna be stretching the feet and then rock left to right that way. And then after a few rocks, you'll switch. So just put whatever leg was on top on the bottom and then pull the feet towards the body. It's gonna feel so weird, but it'll be a nice relief for the, the ankles and then rock. And then when you feel like it's time, you can let go and then grab the insides of the legs or the bottoms of the feet. And we'll do happy baby and rock left to right that way. Just one more hip opener before we move on and get into Shavasana. And then go ahead and bring the knees back together, drop the feet. Straighten the legs and take a stretch. Circle the wrists and ankles, point the toes. Let's shake everything out here. And then you're moving on to your relaxation, your corpse pose, your Shavasana. So if you wanna get a blanket or put socks on or cover the eyes, do any of those things. When you're ready, your arms will be along the sides of the body. Separate the feet, let, let the toes hang out. Even take a nice wide, um, some space with your arms. Take up space and let go here. We're gonna take a few breaths. And as we take those breaths, when you exhale, it's going to be, and Jesse, I think we did this yesterday. You're gonna purse the lips and exhale through the lips that way. So it'll be like an inhale and then and just do that a few times. Your muscles begin to soften. And close the lips, continue to breathe in and out through the nose. Feel the bones settle to the back of the body. And feel as though the muscles are melting away from the bones. Just complete release. And when your mind wanders, bring it back to the breath. You are no longer controlling your breath. Your breath is coming and going as it wants to, as if it's breathing your body. You're simply observing and staying in the present.
bring your awareness back to your breath. Allow your inhalations to begin to deepen. And when you're ready, begin to slowly bring movement to the body by wiggling the fingers and the toes. Begin to rock the head back and forth and move the wrists and the ankles. And then bring the arms overhead and take a long stretch from the knees, do whatever feels good here. And then roll onto your right side. Use your arm as a pillow. And this is the part where we leave the old self behind and we sit up anew. So when you're ready, slowly push yourself up to a seated position to the new version of yourself. Little things are big things. Bring your hands together in front of your heart. Thank you for letting me guide you today. The teacher in me honors and appreciates the teacher in you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great day.